Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Hearts Fire for the New Order as the Siberian Black Army. Let us continue on from where we last left off. So we're presenting some elected officer candidates. See how that goes for us. And I would like to raid some of these people. Unfortunately, none of them have any loot whatsoever, which I'm surprised by. I would think at some point they would have something. Also, we have negative 21%. Public education, why would that re reduce our research speed? Don't know. We have horrible poverty, which I guess is not... Crazy, considering the fact that we're living in the middle of Siberia. The biggest city has, well, 200,000 people. I mean, how many people do we actually have in total in, um, the country right now? About 560,000. Okay, so, you know, it's, it's a, not a war-torn area. Um, but things are still not great here, so most people are still living in poverty. Let me see, actually, I want to go to education. How, why is public education... Elite only education. Okay, so we at least want to go for subsidized higher education if we can. Monthly poverty rate, it gets better. Free education, that would be really nice. It gives a lot of stability and a lot of research speed. So I'm assuming, yeah, they're just basically going into, um... Probably just high school. So they're not doing anything... Maybe even elementary school, I'm not too sure. What's considered higher education. So I guess that most people only have, you know, elementary school or high school level education. There's no real, there's no real scientist in, in our society at the moment. But, you know, at some point we would hope to change that. Election Day. Companion Nestor was born for this position, but his namesake did not just fight alone. Inflicting heavy casualties against the frankly far better uh, equipped uh, Soviet forces, Nestor proves himself not a man of opportunism, but of heroism. I cannot sing enough praises of for the man. Clap. Clasping his hands together and meeting eyes with each member of the Security Council, Madovov returned to his seat by the young man, flushed with excitement. You are a shoe, and it's a pleasure to be working with you, he grinned, extending his hand to the boy. The men of the council murmured between themselves in deliberation. Matyov furred his eyebrows. What was taking so long? The boy was an inspiration. Something for the next generation of the Black Army to look up to you. A pair sat up for what appeared to be days, months maybe? Years, it felt like. Centuries of side-eye glances from pudgy senior members of the council. I believe we have reached a consensus. Mario side relief, finally. We find in a vote of 8-1, to one, Companion Nestor is not to be promoted at this time. All throughout Russia, everyone could hear the sound of his jaw of Matyov hitting the floor. The council does not stand for the cults. Companion Matyov, or Matv, is something that you should be well aware of. We are not looking for propaganda men. Furthermore, this action is granted reasonable cause for investigation into your loyalties. The decision is not open for appeal. My advice, mind flickered between emotions. How could they do this? He was under investigation. They might as well have shot him dead on the spot. You'll we'll hear of your next <laughs> prospecting officer. Unlike before, only one man strode up to a uh, podium, a boy barely 20, his hands clamped. Your name, companion? I am Mikhail Stepanov. My father encouraged me to consider the advancement of my career after uh, successfully overseeing the receipt supplying a local garrison. The men of the council had shot each other knowing glances, except for one, Ian Spetnov. The boy's father smiled shortly and straightforward. Well, I think we need to hear no more. Unanimously, the council approves the motion. So, I guess you're now in charge. They did not put it... Is it, is it the same Nestor from the actual like Ukrainian Black Army and the actual Russian Civil War? I'm not too sure. You can scavenge for more loot, which is another 50% factory output loss. But that's kind of okay, because again, the only thing we're really missing is... You have loot. If you have loot, I'm not going to loot you. Because I do have more men on this border. I have more troops than you have in total, anyways. So I'm hoping that this kind of goes all right, all things considered. So we have 25 days. No, we have two days until you're ready. What if all of you, eh, all of you come down to here for right now, just so when we loot, we should win without too much problem. I don't know, I mean, you guys have two divisions. There is a chance that those are the only two divisions you have, because we know you have somewhere between two and four. We know you have five to seven. Apparently you are not led by anybody right now, which I feel would be a state of weakness for you. So what has happened... It looks like Tito has once again risen up in Croatia. Will he survive? Oh, probably not. I'm sure the Italians are going to invade any moment now. And yes, let us initiate the raid against you. It'll be ready in... 
Now? Rex, okay, so they, they just keep didn't give us what we wanted. Fantastic. Bloodshed has been avoided. Well, a little bit anticlimactic, but I mean, if you're just going to give me what I want, then I guess I'll take it. So you're not at war with the People's Revolutionary Council, which is not good, because we do need Tanatuva if we want to form the next step in our kind of plan. And once you're done, we'll actually be able to do another level of upgrades here. Increases consumer goods. We, we do not want... Basically, it goes down. But you know what? 7.5, it'll actually give me one more um, factory for construction. Wait, no. I've lost... Wait, how did I lose a civilian factory? I don't know how I lost a civilian factory. That worries me a little bit. A slight glimmer of hope. Coil paced across the floor of the assembly hall. The security council, rife with tilted heads and confused glances, observed the spectacle. Charts sat atop their stands, adorned with lines ebbing and flowing. The numbers mattered little to the members of the council. The graph said it all. Progress had been made as far away from completion. Companions, I would like to begin by noting the significant growth in communal cooperation. As you may know, we have hit our coil clear his throat, road bumps along the way. As I say, we have started out with little, frankly, nothing at all. Do not misconceive my words for content for this land. However, I only mention this to emphasize the massive structural changes brought about in the receding years. With the passing of the way, we can focus solely on the future, and I assure you, companions, the future is bright. I comp uh, compiled the data comparing the, art, the industrial output, as you can see here. He points to the chart, depicting a steady growth of the population areas. You can see, even accounting for our most isolated companions, we're able to pick up the slack without running the risk of upsetting the balance. Companion Klitschklov sat his pen down and turned his attention to the presenter. I've been quite involved with the process and I can only echo the words of Companion, uh, companion Coil, though I do have a question for the speaker. While we're performing well now, how will your data change as surrounding territories were liberated? Well, it would certainly do no harm. Ultimately, the empowerment of the people is our top priority, and this means that bringing the empowerment of fruition are certainly in a place already. Expanding security patrols of the Black Army would be beneficial around is what I'm hearing. Undoubtedly. I believe we have our next motion. So it looks like we're preparing for some, uh... We're gonna be riding on moving forward, maybe doing a little bit of invasions. You know, just here and there. Bing bada boom. Those, that, those are supposed to be like gunshot noises. I know it doesn't really translate that well, but don't worry about that. It's all good. So we have 22 days until you're finished. Political power, 0.47, and that's an improvement to where it was before. And... You do have loot. But we have, we've done a successful raid recently, so we can't uh, loot multiple people. I'll put my troops on this board, because I'd much rather loot here next. Because I do think these are going to be kind of our first offensive plans. How many troops do you have? I mean, you also only have 3 to 5. The fact is, like, we're actually one of the stronger powers in the region, which is nice. Um, we'll follow that up, I think, probably with new schools, so we can maybe get some better uh, research bonuses. Because we want to make sure our troops are good. As good as humanly possible. You're a 1960 tech. I do think we just want to upgrade our infantry, really. I know there's a lot of industry techs we can get as well. But if we have better soldiers than all of our neighbors, that will pay dividends. For sure, for sure. I hope. Maybe. Brazil has won the World Cup. Congratulations to them. And I think after I press this button, we'll get yeah, a new uh, focus tree. So moving forward. Companions, I believe we have our next motion. Kalishnikov smiled and rested his head on his hand. Obviously, it is clear that in all aspects, we are a resounding success. Think of our system as a grand clockwork. Picture the thousands of moving parts working together. But independently, we build on top of each other. Our hands interlocked are the gears pushing forward the hands of progress until time runs out for the Reich. The Japanese kleptocrats, the puppets show that it is American democracy. How could the Black Army function without arms? How could our weapons factories churn out the goods they do without the mandate of the people? How would the people sleep soundly at night if it were not for the Black Army? You see, companions, we are interwoven, all essential parts of one grand experiment. Make no mistake, when I say we, I do not just mean those in this room, in this town, the land safeguarded by the brave men and women of the Black Army. No, our goal is much uh, too essential to settle for this. I say, I speak for all of Russia, to the world, to the human race, that sh the chains that bind you are no longer essential. 
Seeing this, I motion for a median shift in policy towards the modernization of the land, as well as an expansion of the Black Army to properly be equipped to tackle our neighboring the threats our neighbors pose. Who stands with me? Before he even finished, many had already raised their hands in approval. Klebnikov nodded unanimously. This council approves a motion for a shift in policy. So right now, you guys are still going by 0.02 a day. And now there is substantially more stuff. We can do this. Winter is over and the spring has ended. I don't know when that fires, but we'll kind of see. First thing first, revolutionary reconstruction. Give me a little bit more stability, which is always nice. Still can't do any looting, unfortunately. And Italy's faction has collapsed, but that doesn't matter so much. We could probably improve... Um, yeah, let's improve production quota. Still non-existent. I'm assuming probably at 10 is when we go into very little and then, you know, a little and then moderate and then, you know, so on and so forth. I'm assuming if we get to 100%, things are not going to go well for us. Okay, and you guys have won your war there, which is good news for us. It means we can actually invade you in the future without too much of a problem. In order to bring about free revolution to all of Siberia, and to ensure the freedom is protected from those who would destroy us, we must ensure that we are well practiced in self-defense. The Black Army thus ensures that we are truly uh, is a that there truly is a right upon every blade of grass, and that national administration shortcomings of anarchism are compensated by the grieving militia commanders, the overall and the overall leaders of the Black Army, a form of overall control. I mean the attack is nice. The daily despotic support is not great. I know eventually I think once this hits 30%, it's gonna go down to 0 0.01 per day. So it's going to be less impactful as time goes on. And Turkey's declared war on them. Not a huge surprise. After that, the gray area of the Red Mantle. I mean, the thing is, like, it's kind of hard to see what these actually do for us. Political power. Of course, your, your military stuff. Let's go for the gray area first. And we'll kind of see what that uh, entails for our uh, little country. Italy's declared war on Yugoslavia. Basically, what I said, I was not surprised by that in the slightest. But you're now at war with you. Who's actually not a puppet state of Italy anymore. So I guess Italy can't actually really supply too many troops into the area. Did this actually not give us an event? I don't know. Because I, I don't see an event yet. But it might pop up fairly soon. Air experience, army experience. We're actually, volunteer only is actually, we're actually losing army experience daily, which is not great. But when can I? I want to loot. Has not successful raid. Just want to, just want to click this button. Because I want, I mean, I don't know where I actually even see that modifier for successful raid. Because I don't know where it is in this, um, this menu here. Italy has defeated Yugoslavia. I don't think anybody is surprised by that. Yeah, now you are Croatia and Bosnia, two separate little uh, countries. Both of them are currently headed by the Italians, though, so we'll kind of see how that plays out. It might matter a little bit in their war. Oh, yeah, we can now invade you. We'll see if you also just give up. Uh, it might play out in the balance between Germany and the Italians. Because I think they can go to war, depending on who actually wins in the German Civil War. Because last time we saw anybody win the German Civil War, it was Speer. And Speer's a little bit more of a... I guess a moderate. Yeah, we're not. We'll, we'll go for deregulate industrial administration. We want to kind of hold back the despot for now. Cognitive dissidence. Gaspar's face itched horribly. It could have been the air or the whiskers that had begun to spring up. No. Gaspar knew that at the back of his mind it was fear. Fear was a rare emotion to the man, at least outwardly. He yearned to scratch, but was prevented by the rusting pair of handcuffs. Praising the policies of Bukharin and risking his name, his life in the name of anarchy was something he had struggled to reconcile with. And judging by the trembling before him, they did as well. Traitor, the crowd jeered. This land belongs to the people. We will not bow to the state once more. The decrepit town hall was bursting at the seams. Look around you. Where did the Union get you? Gasper felt the burning sensation in his face. Rage. The prisoner hung his head in a vain attempt to save face. Why could they not understand that he had believed in liberty? But without that, without a strong state, there'd be no stopping fascists from raising this land. Speak for yourself, coward. Do you have a defense? Or are you content dancing for your masters? Gaspard had no intention of being used. That's why he enlisted into the Black Army in the first place. Close-minded, he spat. You think you're the smartest man in Russia. But you don't know shit. 
It's easy to sit inside the assembly halls of Knask and shout from the rafters, to stand atop boxes surrounded by loyal and devout followers and wave a cap around, shouting the same entire phrase of freedom and liberty. Where is your liberty? Where is your freedoms? Oh, I'm sure we all value the freedoms to lick the boot of the Black Army. Overjoy the Security Council's grants us the freedom to say whatever we want. But comrade, if this is fucking freedom, then... The impassioned speech ended in an abrupt bang. Smoke emanated from across the room. A pistol of source. It's apparent the man was guilty. I had no time for snake tongue. For status, spoke the man. He's on the door with the insignia of the Black Army. Let's go home. Okay, that, that seems like a, f a fun little time. To, yeah, just shoot him in the back of the head, it's fine. Or maybe, maybe the side of the head. I'm not too sure which way the, the bullet came. So we got the Red Menace. What do you do? Fighting Panel is a mass industrial program that built to the reach of Russia. Uh, Jewish Soviet War. We also made Lost War. Maybe Purple Survey. You, the final preparations. You okay, so these are when we're eventually going to be able to declare war on more and more people. Uh, which I do want to do, for obvious reasons, and I do also, of course, want to attack you. Will you also just surrender? I have seven divisions on your border. You have one. They have refused tribute. How dare you? How dare you? You refuse the tribute. Uh, we also have research slot available. Uh, we could go for the better rifles, and honestly, I think this is what we want to at least go for one industry tech. Cap minus 5% or growth. Effectively, base plus 10%. Well, the cap goes up, but growth is... Yeah, no, we probably want horizontal. We'll go for you. The People's Apocalypse. A nation of writers, poets, and scholars. The University of Tomsk produced more manuscripts and manifestos than most people care to count. Yet One Piece, published anonymously, has begun to spread controversy far and wide throughout Siberia. The People's Apocalypse. It tells the story of a faceless scholar's journey through the halls of the Central Siberian Republic, progressively encountering those who the odd author identifies as four horsemen of the apocalypse. Ivan Sokolo, Genrik Yugoda, Alexander Plosi, and Nikoli Andrev. Awakening in Arroya, after falling ill, the scholar finds the people reduced to babbling madmen, crawling out of their own crawling out their own eyes and pulling apart the scalps of the pestilence brought to the land from Sokolo. Poisoning the people from the excellent name Faith and weakening the body of the Republic. Chased away by the blind and corrupted. The scholar soon found himself witnessed the land being set ablaze of the free thinkers abducted and persecuted by Yagoda as blue faced demons wage war against the people. Persecuting by Yagoda as blue faced demons wage war against the people, fleeing the slaughter. They came upon an endless road of living skeletons. Famine consumed the land from Koryo's terrible, brutal. Terrible. Oh, it's betrayal. For Koryo's terrible betrayal, before finally witnessing Adarev's betrayal at Kreshnyokos. Piercing the heart of the nameless soldier and body the nobling republic. Condemning the four men to bring about the end of the promised people's realm, the story ends with the land destroyed and all four being consumed by the madness under the weight of their own evil. Turning the stone as hideous reminders of their deeds, though it is left unanswered whether anyone will survive this end days to remember what is lost. Why am I losing? Are those my people? I don't know, because I lost some political power. Is that, is that you? I don't think so. So I'm not too sure what the problem is. Of course, we're winning our war here. Uh, it is four against one. Even though our troops are not terribly um, great right now. We did succeed in our uh, raid. Don't know how many men we lost in that battle, but let's just like not think about it. You'll all go back to yellow or back into blue. Prepare your invasions. We got 150, 175 early rifles and a little bit of civilian, a little bit of support. I will take it. Because I do like guns. We've deregulated you. Still not time for the Black Spring. I'm assuming this doesn't fire until 1930, uh, 1963. So you have a little bit of time left until then. And of course, we want to either go full, you go full anarchist, you give us, you only give us like a bonus for one year, which is not great. Let's, let's look and see what the red mantle does. And many heads are better than one. The map of central Siberia reeked of mildew, sides dotted with rips and tears, and the city names rendered illegible from decades of exposure to the elements. Through it all, however, the double-headed eagle sat replenished in the corner. Its waffle gaze promising to prevent any harm to, revolve, to befall Russia. Although the Eagle Watch very rarely did someone sit her back. Until the fat face of Vinium 
entered into the field of vision. The fuck is this? Are we really using maps from the Empire? He turned around to the rest of his peers, who are seemingly hunched over over the yellowing map. It's old, but it's reliable. I brought pens. One man reached his bag and received six pence. We can mark out different communes from here. He uncapped his pen and immediately scribbled over the coat of arms of the House of Romanov, stuffing out the bird for good. I suppose we can go alphabetically. What's the status of Brezhnev and Krutina? Less than ideal. Uh, we've been hit hard by communists in the east ever so often. Some bitter old men will cross into our land and burn it all to the ground. The Black Army has promised to increase presence, but we've got nothing of the sort. The man nodded, drawing a skull and crossbones over the commune, diverting from Zygilis a possibility. Much of the industry was left untouched. Thus becoming a pattern for three long hours, the members of the communal industrial advancement cancel through signs and stripes. Painted a picture of a free land interwoven with arrows. Good stance around the frozen tundra, springing from place to place as the hunt for the perfect balance escalated. The man finally sat his pen down, admiring his work. It was messy, but well put together. It was an organized chaos fitting for the free territory. Working together, there's nothing unachievable. So we just like crossed out some town. Is it this town right here? No, that's a factory. It's, it's not a little town that's being burnt to the ground. Which I think is pretty okay. But for right now, I think it's going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thanks everyone for watching. My name is Ants If you enjoyed, remember to thumbs up. Now do we close thumb down. You want to see where to subscribe and goodbye.